Hello everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're not being too hard on yourself. Um, anyways, I wanted to do a part two, a follow-up to um, my first video, I guess being back on YouTube. Um, it is the worst moment of my life and I wanted to share it with everybody. <laughs> I'm sharing this with the world not because I particularly want to, but because I feel like I need to. Um, my younger brother, he always believed in me and he always wanted me to post on YouTube and to be... He always saw a bigger future for me than I could have ever imagined. I mean, I always imagined, but I just... I always found excuses so I yeah just be prepared I will be slowly releasing videos from a while ago uh, so just be patient with me and also stuff that's current as well and so I'm probably gonna start with trying to go through as many videos as possible that ultimately have my younger brother in them Adam and so th there are certain parts of videos that I'm I'm glad I didn't edit them <laughs> um, you know after they happen I'm glad that I have the raw footage now um, usually you know like certain clips I would definitely I'd remove the audio and speed it up or whatever you know get rid of it but like I've already gone back and listened to some of them and it has my younger brother's voice in it and so some of the videos are going to be long and it's all because that my younger brother's voice is in it and um, I you know I'm gonna be posting these videos not only for myself but also for other people who knew Adam and loved him and cared about him so they have you know something to watch and um, yeah if it can provide any comfort for anybody then it's worth it because Adam was, you know, we lost him very tragically and unexpectedly nobody saw this coming. He was healthy and like, it just, it, even now it still, it doesn't feel real and it's just a very bizarre reality that we're now living in. And so, you know, not only is, you know, posting these videos um, helpful for me and um, it'll help me to move on and um, be able to also be appreciative of the time that I did have with Adam. Um, I also know that it will hopefully provide a lot of comfort for other people as well and so that's kind of ultimately the goal. Yeah, I have a lot of other videos and it's very, a lot of the videos are very sporadic and very just random. And so there's going to be a lot of sit down videos of me like this, just kind of filling in the gaps, um, mainly because it's a way for me to remind myself that it did happen, um, that my younger brother did pass away and that we did go through this, that this is what happened. And for other people to know as well, um, like what happens when you do die, especially in college and tragically and like you don't anticipate something like that ever happening and so and also to help give a little bit of background to other people as to why we made certain decisions the way that we did it grief is a really really weird thing and I hope that nobody ever has to go through what my family um, has gone through but I know that is not the case you know other people will go through other people will experience this kind of traumatic loss unfortunately um, we are not the first and we won't be the last and so if my videos can help other people not feel alone in their process and their grieving and just um, just the craziness of it all like I want to try and be as open as possible but I also have to respect my family and also my younger brother and so there is certain parts that I will not be sharing I will be I, yeah I won't be sharing everything but I will share as much as I possibly can um, and yeah yeah I will 
try and explain everything, the whole process from, you know, when we found out, um, you saw how I reacted, my experience, literally that was my experience. Um, and for all the people who are like, why did you record yourself after something like that? Um, that is a very, like, that is a very, there is no short answer, essentially, but filming has always been, like, filming myself has always been a form of comfort. Um, that's just, it's a form of therapy for me. Even if I don't post it online, it's just a form of therapy, just being able to talk it out and feeling like I'm talking to somebody and just feeling safe and comfortable. And when something like this happens to someone, it is extremely disorienting and it doesn't feel real. Like it honestly just, like I kept saying in the video, this isn't real. This has like, I kept saying like this, this is a joke. This has to be a joke because it, that's how it felt. When my dad called me, it took everything in me to not ask, is this a joke? Because I knew it wasn't. My parents would not ever do something like this. Like it, you know, it was real. And I knew that, but I was in shock. Like everything, I was in complete and utter shock. And that night, oh, that night was awful. And I was alone. It was 10 o'clock at night. I was alone. It was dark. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't know what to do. And I know I have friends, and I know I could have called them. And, like, I know that. And, like, I know that I could have called certain friends. I know that they're there, and I know they would, you know, like, it's not that I didn't know that I could call you. Like, I... You know, I contemplated calling some of my friends, but as soon as I would have to, like, I Snapchatted one of my friends. That is what the one thing is. I couldn't call and I couldn't text. I couldn't do anything. Like, just sending that one Snapchat, like, I could, I could barely do that. I was in such shock. And because every single person you tell after you get news like that it it becomes real and secretly you want it to be a dream you want it to be a nightmare you don't want it to be real and like you hope that like oh it's the wrong information or you know they, it's the wrong person wrong identity you know like you're just hoping and praying that it's just not it's not real but it was <laughs> And so I didn't want to call anybody. You know, it was late at night. I didn't want to, I didn't, like, I was, de you know, I was, I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know how to react. I just, like, I, like, my mind just couldn't wrap my head around what was going on. Like, my body knew what was going on, and my body felt the loss and the pain and just the agony. Like, my body was in shock. But my brain just was having, like, my head just was having a hard time comprehending it and trying to do everything in its power to protect me from feeling those emotions to the full extent. Um, granted, I did feel the emotions, but I definitely think it could have been 10 times worse. And yeah, I was alone. And so it just, everything about it just, it was brutal. And I would never ever wish being alone on anybody getting this kind of news because it's just, it's extremely isolating. And you're like, in some ways you want somebody to be around to remind you that it's real and that it is, it's reality because it doesn't feel real. Like I even contemplated, like, I'm just gonna go to work tomorrow because I, I didn't know what to do with myself. And that is, that's very common um, for a lot of people who lose someone tragically. It's like, well, what can I do? Like, I don't know what, what, I, what to do with myself. Like, I, like sitting here and bawling and crying, like, what? that's not going to bring them back. Nothing, like, sitting and being alone is not good. <laughs> um, and so 
I was like, I have no clue what's going on. And so the second phone call, basically, like my dad told me, kind of, you know, it wasn't suicide and stuff like that. And so that was that was good. Um, I think that was the second phone call. I don't remember. I just remember the first phone call, and then the second phone call was that was kind of a blur. Um, I just know that me and my siblings, we all decided that we were going to go down to my parents. And that night, that night was hard. Uh, I ended up sleeping on my couch <laughs> right here. And I didn't get much of any sleep at all. I was, I was like, I was so sick. TMI, you guys, I had terrible diarrhea throughout the entire night. And if I wasn't having horrible diarrhea, I was basically so nauseous and I had um, an ice cream pail bucket, an empty one. That's what my family and I, we, like, um, we use because then you, if you throw up, you can throw up in it and then you can chuck it once you're done. Um, yeah, helpful tip if you guys, you know, save your ice cream pails and then you can just use it as a throw up bucket. Um, <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, it's great. Um, and so, yeah, I was ridiculously nauseous. I, yeah, was up and going to the bathroom constantly. I could barely sleep. I was like just crying a lot. Um, I had a pounding headache. I just like, I just felt so sick. I couldn't, the thought of eating or drinking anything, just like, I couldn't even fathom it. I went from being warm to being really cold. Like I just, I went through it. Like I wasn't comfortable at all. I ended up trying to sleep on the floor in the bathroom. That's what I do when I feel really sick. I, especially nauseous, I end up sleeping on the floor in the bathroom. Um, yeah, it just was bad. And then of course, like by the time that I actually like started to fall asleep was literally like two hours, maybe an hour before I had to leave. <laughs> so my brother he came and picked me up around like I think 7 a.m. Uh, for us to leave really none of us in my family got any sleep and if we did get any sleep it was horrible it was crappy and yeah it just wasn't good and yeah there is no reason for us to drive to my parents that night like by the time I would have gone to my parents it would have been midnight and I would have gotten horrible sleep regardless, so like it just didn't make any sense. And I, yeah, I, and driving in the dark, just it just made more sense to go in the morning. And so, um, where you know, if we would have gotten a phone call that like my brother was in the hospital, like I would have, you know, we would have dropped everything and just driven right there. Or if they needed us to come and see his body. Um, like right away totally would have dropped everything and gone but that wasn't the case they didn't need us to go and view his body they knew it was him but I will again I will explain more as the days progress but I just kind of wanted to do a little follow-up to my first video because it it's a hard video and it was hard for me to edit very difficult for me to share with you but I'm also super proud of it because it's it's raw it's authentic that is exactly what I went through like I always thought I'd be that person like bawling and just just completely distraught but I haven't been that way and it's been really confusing very 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 confusing like the way I've been reacting has been different and it's not wrong either you know like there is no right or wrong way to grieve as long as you're grieving and for everybody who wants to know what happened um I would for what happened I will I will post a video when we know um what happened uh, we are still waiting for certain results to come back to have an official cause, but that could take until July. It can take six months. And so um, until we have an official like cause, I don't want to say anything, especially online, 
um, and give misinformation about what ha like this is what happened. Um, but just know that it wasn't suicide and it, it, we have theories. There was a theory that then was disproved after one test came back. And so there's another theory, but we'll see. Again, we're waiting for more test results because they did do an autopsy and everything that goes with an autopsy. So we are waiting for that. Adam was a really great kid, really smart, like, I feel sad that the world doesn't get to know my brother. Um, I feel bad for people who don't get to know him and have a relationship with him because he was had a beautiful soul. Like, I mean, he had his flaws, obviously. Um, but overall, he was a good person, and he was smart, and uh, it's, just really, it's just really unfortunate. Um, yeah, I will be coming up, I will be posting other videos and some, yeah, pertaining to loss and some not pertaining to, and a lot, a lot of them will not be pertaining to loss, but, um, you know, this channel is about Rachel, about me, and so this is a huge part of my life, and so, of course, I feel like it's something that I need to share, but I also want to be clear when I say this that um, I need to be respectful for to my family. And so there's a lot that I might not be able to share and certain experiences that I will not be able to post on here, um, post online for you guys to see because it's just not appropriate especially right now, maybe in the future, maybe in a few years, it might be appropriate for me to post, but, um, that, you know, again, it's only been, it ha it's been a very short amount of time since my brother passed, and so we're still in the thick of healing and grieving, and we have a long ways to go, each one of us, and so, um, I, you know, I do have to say, please, please respect our privacy, and, um, please don't ask insensitive questions, and don't expect answers. Uh, the answers will come when they come. And again, it's they will come if I am given approval from my family members because I am. This affects not. It's not just me, but my entire family. And so I want to be respectful of their feelings. And um, yeah, so just be patient. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. I feel like you guys know the spiels, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Like the video, give it a thumbs up if you don't already subscribe. There is a subscribe button down there, which you should click. And um, if you want to be notified about the next time I post a video, which as you know, is very sporadic um, at the moment, who knows, maybe I'll become more um, regular. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you, if you want to know when I post next, click the notification bell, and you will be notified from my understanding down below. Boop, boop. Pew, pew. Pew. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. I know you could be spending it elsewhere, but you're here, so thank you so much, especially if you have made it this far. I do appreciate you. Look at my cute dog. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I do appreciate you guys, and I hope that you guys are doing well, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Preach out! Look at my dog. That's Duke. <laughs> That's my dog, Duke. You guys will be introduced to him at some point, um, but if, have I introduced you guys to him before? I don't think so. Anyways, I have a dog named Duke. He is five. Yes, he is five. He turned six in June. Um... He is an Australian Shepherd, and yeah. Again, I will do an introduction another time, but isn't he so cute? Oh, oh look at that yawn. <laughs>